Hello, gamers, outlaws. What do I call you guys? I leave in the comments what I should call you. I, I call you guys goobers on the Discord, but like, I kind of want a name for you guys properly. Cause like, <laughs> calling you guys goobers is all well and fine, but I want a name for you all. Outlaw gang, I call you guys the outlaw gang. Do you like the outlaw gang? Should I change it? I don't know. Hello, outlaw gang. Welcome to a new video. Today's video is gonna be very interesting. Brand new style of video. I'm returning to gaming for Elden, Elden Ring, Ring PvP, PvP baby. baby. Woo! <laughs> yeah, anyway. Uh, <laughs> I made an Elden Ring PvP build. And I want to walk you guys through the build, show you guys some of the some of the things that I did that helped me win. And I'm gonna elaborate on my strategy. So first thing I need to know let you guys know about is the fact is my is my patreon my patron saw this video 24 hours early they're kind of the coolest if you're a patron let them know in the comment section below <laughs> one thing about this build that i that i can sa safely say is that it improved my game plan when i started doing elden ring pvp i played for an hour and i got one win <laughs> That's not a joke. That is not, that's not cap. I got one single win out of an hour. It was brutal. <laughs> but I changed up my strategy, changed how I was engaging in PvP, and I changed up my spells and my kit, and I improved drastically. Once I finally settled on a kit, I went 14 and two. That is 14 wins, two losses. The one loss was to a turtle build, and then another one to a bleed build, I think. But this strategy works. Let's walk you through it. This is a strength faith build. You need to have equal parts strength and faith in order to make this PvP build work. Make sure you also have enough endurance in order to carry all of the equipment we're going to be we're going to be carrying because this is a pretty equipment heavy build. And make sure as well you get a po this charm that raises your poise. Now, quickly before we get into the rest of the video, some of the items and spells I'm using are end game things. If you would prefer not to be spoiled, click off the video now. That being said. Let's get into it. Our main equipment, our main offensive pressure tool, the main thing we're going to be using after we have all of our equipment, uh, where we're using the Crucible Tree set for our body, the Dragon Scale um, helmet, our main offensive pressure tool is... The Claw Mark Seal. The Claw Mark Seal you get from the Beast Clergyman after giving him a, your first death root. And with this Claw Mark Seal, it allows us to equally scale our incantations with both strength and faith. Perfect for this build. Of course, everything is ranked up to the max as much as we can go. Next, our main offensive pressure tool that we're using with this beast thing is our Beast Claw Mark Seal is Bestial Sling. Rocks, baby! Now, Bestial Sling is honestly, I think, the best PvP spell in game right now. It's good at a range, it's good at poking, it's good at closing distance, it's good at close range, You can, it's able to be chain cast, and when it hits, it doesn't do the most damage, but it does stagger the opponent, knocking them out of whatever animation they're probably engaging in, especially if they have low poise, like a lot of common builds do. You can be throwing your rocks whenever you want. You can throw them to do damage, you can throw them at close range, you can throw them when they're far away just to let them know that you're coming for them. You can throw them to close distance or get away whenever you damn well want, because rock doesn't just beat scissors, it beats everything. Rock is in a great, great, great spell. It is excellent for PvP due to the sheer amount of stagger that it does on your opponent. It's not a lot, it's just enough to knock them out of their animation. And if your opponent isn't doing what they want, you are doing what you want. That is the primary goal of this build. This thing can catch rolls, back steps, jumps, though you don't actually want to use it on jumps. <laughs> but this thing is so useful and versatile, you can use rocks whenever you want. And also, it can be chain cast, and this is important. We'll be getting into why that's important uh, after this. Additionally, if you throw this when they're entering into your range, you can stop their animation with the rocks and then beat them to death with our second main hand weapon, the hammer. Now, this hammer is one of the spoilers. This is a spoiler, so be ready. Um, you get this weapon for beating the game. You get this from the Remembrance of the Elden Beast. You get 
This is Marika's Hammer. Now, Marika's Hammer is a really, really good weapon. It does a lot of damage, it swings very fast, and when you hit your opponent, it will more often than not stagger them. It's pretty hard to poise through it unless they're wielding a greatsword and are mid-swing animation. So, this is very good when you're in a brawl situation in a PvP match, which will often come up. Marcus Hammer is going to be the thing that we use when we know we can win, and also something we can use to apply some more close-range pressure. Because the rocks are great. The rocks are great at a pretty short range to about a mid-range, but once they start closing that distance, you're going to want to bring out your mace. That mace is going to be used to apply tons of pressure. It swings very fast, so once they enter into range, you can pretty confidently spam the shit out of your opponent. You can start hitting them, whacking them, knocking them senseless. Swing, swing, swing for the fences with this thing. If your opponent is going to try and poise through your attacks, more often than not, they're going to fail unless they themselves are, are taking advantage of poise, in which case we, you should probably get a different strategy for them. Right, but most opponents, especially bleed builds or other such builds, you can, once they've used their big attack or whatever, you can close distance and wail on them with this thing. It does a lot of damage, it attacks fast, it, it staggers, it's great. Additionally, it's Ash of War, Goldbreaker, has got a really unique thing about it, and that it gives you a ton ton of poise in its anim in its startup animation. It hits like a truck when it finally when it does land and also it has a ton of poise. So it's really hard to knock you out of it. If your opponent is just going to try and wail on you when you're doing this, they are more than often not going to fail and they're going to eat the business end of your mace and sending them flying, leaving them perf completely open to a counterattack, to a punish. So I mentioned we have Bestial Sling. This is our main offensive pressure tool. We also have um, Black Blade. This is more for intimidation factor than anything. I'm not going to lie, I didn't really find a good use for this in PvP. I kind of just have this on because I, I think it's really cool. You got to have some things that you like, okay? It does have some unique mix-ups as well as some... It's really threatening. Um, if, when you do hit with this, it hits like a truck, it takes away half their health, and it, prevent, it it caps how much HP they can recover. And if you're dealing with some healing pot Andes, yeah, it's gonna be quite useful. But when things can be chain cast, you can chain cast any spell into another chain cast spell. This means you can bestial sling into Black Blade, and drastically reducing the startup, startup lag on Black Blade. Additionally, you, uh, you can, this allows you to chain into our, our third primary offense spell, Honed Bolt. This spell is really, really good. This spell can allow you is a is a really unique tool, and you need to learn how to use it in order for it to fit into this kit. Mostly, you're going to be using it as a follow up to Bestial Sling because the startup lag for Honed Bolt is so long and so obvious. You can really catch people off guard with Bestial Sling into Honed Bolt. So once you do that, Bestial Sling into Honed Bolt, all of a sudden they're going to be getting pressured from the sky with these bolts. These bolts hit for about 400 damage each. You can attack quite rapidly. It attacks on target from above, meaning it's really hard to shield it, and it has splash damage, meaning it can catch rolls. This is a really hard spell to deal with. If you don't know the strategy to deal with it, you're gonna get screwed by it. How you deal with it is honestly really counterintuitive, but funny. You charge the caster. <laughs> if you try rolling side to side, you're gonna get caught. You're gonna get roll caught every single time. However, if you just run toward the caster, the bolts will strike behind you. It's really stupid. <laughs> but Honed Bolt is one of our tools on the kit. You should definitely learn how to use it. The main way we're going to be using this thing is just to punish as people are rolling away from you. Um, uh, if they try to heal, Bestial Sling into Honed Bolt is a really good way to punish healing. It's also a great way to punish people who like playing at a distance. Additionally, it's also really good to punish turtles. Turtling is a strategy that one of is one of the few strategies that's pretty hard to deal with right now in the meta, so I'll, I'll address that at the end of this video. After doing some further testing with Bestial Sling and Honed Bolt, as well as some playing on streams, I stream gaming every Tuesday, by the way, on this on YouTube. But what I discovered was that Bestial Sling and Honed Bolt have a unique interaction. I do not know if this affects every single chain cast spell, but at least this is how it works for these two specific ones. Depending on when you cast Honed Bolt, 
it changes the animation. If you only cast Bestial Sling once in a chain and then go into Honed Bolt, you enter into the standard Honed Bolt animation, allowing you to additionally follow up with more bolts. However, if you do two casts of Bestial Sling and then into Honed Bolt, you do this second animation where your character can still kind of move around and you wave your hand and it's a really fast and off-guard animation. Whether or not this is a glitch or if it's um, a feature, I do not know, but it's definitely very useful, and you may as well use it while it's in the game. I have found some great success punishing players by going into Bestial Sling 2 into this Hone Bolt, but if you want to try and catch rolls, it might be more advantageous to do only one cast of Bestial Sling. Anyway, just thought you should know. We also have Aspect of the Crucible, Breath. This spell is great. It's kind of rare, I don't see it a lot in PvP, but that's what part of what makes it really effective. When you activate the ability, you gain a decent amount of poise and you start this breath weapon. When you start this breath weapon, you just march towards your opponent and a wide cone of fire continuously strikes the ground. If you don't know how to avoid this, you're gonna get screwed by it. But if you do manage to land it, you're gonna get about 400 damage if they know how to deal with it. If they don't, you're gonna take them for about half of their health. The most intuitive thing to do against this is seems to be people wanna roll to the side. That's actually not how you avoid this spell. You need to roll backwards. If you roll to the side, the marching of you is going to catch them in their roll and you're going to hit them for tons of damage more than likely forcing them to heal more than likely allowing you to catch them with beast sling to hold bolt you either use this right at the beginning of the match in order to completely throw them off guard or mid-match in order to finish off your opponent or potentially to add on some extra pressure. If they like rolling, this is definitely a great spell. Additionally, we have Flame Fall upon them, though I didn't really find a good time to use it within our kit. It's definitely a good spell though, and it can be good to have, especially for mix-ups. Next are spells that we have. We have Beast Vitality, as well as um, Barrier of Gold. Now this is to give help us with one of our with one of our matchups, and that is against magic users. Magic users are quite common, and it's really important to have a strategy against them. As soon as they give me th something that buffs bleed, though, that buffs my bleed resist, I'm, I'm gonna be using that. Maybe it's in the game already, and I just didn't find it. If you do know of a bleed resist um, incantation, please let me know. But this spell gives you um, resistance to magic, one of the more common things that you're gonna be seeing in this. Let's talk about the other part of that magic matchup kick, the Erd Tree Great Shield. This thing is notorious in Elden Ring PvP already due to a, a glitch that has since been patched, but it is now still a really good PvP weapon, especially against magic users. How it works is it has its Ash of Wars called Golden Retaliation. Basically, you activate it, you swiftly bring your shield in front of you and absorb Absorb the magic into the shield and blast it back as a holy bolt, which will deal about 1000 damage. I get a solid amount of kills with this thing. Due to how magic works, you're usually locked into an animation for a period of time after casting, meaning that this shield is a great way to punish to punish magic users, especially of the more spammy variety as we are wont to see. And finally, we have our last armament, we have the black knife. Black knife is our final armament. This is a tool that we're mostly using for one particular matchup. We also, you can swap to this in a pinch if you need it. It's Ash of War is quite useful for applying long range pressure due to its range. The fact that it works very similarly to Black Blade the spell. Uh, one, if it hits, it does damage over time and it caps the maximum health of our opponent. So it's very, very good. So it can be quite useful in a pinch. Another spell that we're going to be using is um, the Frenzy Burst spell. This is a is your probably one of your better ranged spells that you have. It flies very fast, hits very far. However, its downside is that it locks you in place. So make sure you're only using this against opponents who are very far away. This is part of our kit that we're going to be using to take care of of shields along with the black knife so now we've gotten through all of this all of the kit let's talk about some matchups now the the reason why i've given you all of these tools the reason why i'm advocating for all of these tools is so that you can have lots of good matchups meta in elden ring is very very new it's only been, the game's only been out for a month and most people are only starting to beat the game now, meaning that the people haven't really experienced PvP yet. Now, the best of PvP experience in my in my experience, if you want to do duels, is to activate the Fur Calling Finger and then the Taunter's Tongue. This allows invaders to face you and usually and will force a 1v1 scenario. That way you can have a nice honorable duel without the gank fest that is regular invasions. You can also activate your fur calling finger and have, if you have friends, 
um, use them to write down duelist uh, signs so you can have a nice uh, honorable duel with your friends as well. Let's talk about some matchups. So I made this kit so that you can handle most matchups. The Bestial Sling is going to be your best tool. It's so generic and so easy to use. It is really good against most mid-range weapons and it outranges most spears as well. It's quite useful at taking care of opponents without lots of super armor. So all of the tools I've given you are to counter a majority of builds, but there are some specific matchups that you need to be aware of. Those are bleed builds, turtle builds, and moon veil. <laughs> Let's discuss. Bleed builds right now are usually using some variety of Zepuku with the God Peeler uh, Twin Sword or the Rivers of Blood Katana. Usually how these people are planning on beating you is by spamming their best move over and over and over again. Now, this does work, so I can't really fault them for it. But the way to counterplay it is also quite simple. You just gotta bait them. Once they start using their best move, it locks them usually into an animation. For the God Peeler users, they're going to be doing some variety of jumping attack. You and for the Rivers of Blood users, they're using their Ash of War. For the Rivers of Blood Katana, to dodge back out of range slightly, whip some rocks at them, Come they'll on. die eventually. Or they'll get tired and enter into melee and just start spamming. When they start doing that with their R1, you can punish them hard with Marika's Hammer. Against the God Peelers, honestly, jumping attacks are quite interesting against this build. What you gotta do is you gotta dodge out of the way, swap to Breath of the Crucible, and breathe your fire and punish them. Rinse and repeat because they won't know how to play the game otherwise. <laughs> but if they stop using the jump attacks, swap back to Bestial Sling. Now, bleed builds are relying on their sheer DPS to beat you fast. So if you can outlast them, they will lose patience. That's just how it be sometimes. <laughs> next, uh, the next build we have to worry about is turtle builds. Turtle builds are also quite common in the meta. Definitely not as common as magic or, or bleed builds, but turtle builds are common enough that we need to discuss how to beat them. This is our hardest matchup because we can't pressure them as easily with our rocks with Bestial Sling because their guard boost is so high. Guard boost is the stat that dictates how much stamina you lose when you protect something with your shield. With a lot of guard boost, they are not losing their stamina fast enough for them to really care about our rocks. So they can comfortably charge in and start poking you with your with their spears. So how do we beat them? This is when it's time to swap to our second weapon, the black knife, and to start using honed bolts. The black knife, if they try and shield against it, they will still take damage over time and they will sl slowly lose health with when you use the Ash of War. If you keep them at a distance and then swap Bestial Sling to Honed Bolts to try and finish them off, if they are not rushing you, if they are trying to slow play it, you can catch them and you probably win out the match. So Turtle Builds, I myself, I'm still struggling with. Another thing that I found that can sometimes work against them is catching them off guard with the Crucible Breath Weapon, but this can sometimes also result in some problems. This can result in some problems for you if they have a lot of poise. And finally, Moonveil users. Moonveil users are super common because it's a cool magic sword. It's a katana. Basically, it's Ash of War works as follows. You sheath the blade and then you can do one of two slashes. A sideways slash, which sends out a, a, a wide magical slash, or an overhead one, which will send out a magical bl blade beam. Both of these can be countered hard by our Erd Tree Great Shield. Simply bait them into using it and counter them with the Erd Tree Shield after getting one or two hits with your rock and you will close out the match quite consistently. Quite consistently. Other than that, rocks and hammer are really good. I've written down here a bunch of how I won. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this PvP build. Let me know if you want to see some more Elden Ring PvP builds. I thought this was really fun to make. I loved doing the research for this and trying out different stuff in PvP until I started winning consistently. I had a great time. Let me know in the comments um, what other builds you want to see me analyze slash create. If you want to see more videos like this, what other games you'd be interested in seeing me analyze, thank you very much. Have a fantastic day. Get the fuck out of my house. <laughs>